Hello and welcome back. This begins a discussion of Chapter 7 in Klein Organic Chemistry in the third edition, which covers substitution and elimination reactions of alkyl halides. So in this chapter we'll discuss some naming and properties of alkyl halides and alkenes and substitution and elimination reactions. So this chapter is actually a combination of chapters 7 and 8 from the first two editions of the book. And in my opinion, it seems a bit disjointed uh, as compared to the first two editions, which had a more systematic approach to the explanation of this material, and it was more in-depth. So this is a more condensed discussion and uh, less in-depth, but it perhaps more appropriate because uh, we're going to need to move quickly through this material. So uh, I will use the third edition in this discussion. So if you have one of the older editions, it may skip around a, a little bit for you. So just as an overview, um, we're going to be discussing naming of alkyl halides and alkenes and their structures and some properties of them. We're also going to discuss concerted reactions and there are two different mechanisms we'll have in this chapter for that, the SN2 mechanism and the E2 mechanism. Okay, And then we'll discuss stepwise reactions, the SN1 and E1 mechanisms for those reactions. So this is our first chapter where we're really going to discuss types of reactions uh, types of organic reactions and so we're really just getting started. So I highly recommend that you make flashcards in order to understand the discussion a little bit better and prepare yourself for the exam. So alkyl halides undergo substitution and elimination reactions and when we're talking about alkyl halides we're talking about an sp3 hybridized carbon with a halogen on it and that halogen will be either a chlorine bromine or an iodine. In this chapter, we won't be discussing aerial halides, sp2 aerial halides, or just regular sp2 hybridized halides. Those will be important later on for some other reactions we'll do in this course or in the next semester, but uh, we won't see those in this chapter. We're only concentrating on sp3 hybridized halides here, alkyl halides. So there are two different uh, types of reactions and we're going to look at two mechanisms for each of these types. The first type involves a substitution reaction where we have a substrate okay and that substrate is called an electrophile we can abbreviate that as E plus and then we have a nucleophile that it's reacting with in the end we're going to substitute that nucleophile for the halogen or the leaving group. So what are our players here? electrophile, nucleophile, product, and leaving group. Okay, and we'll look at that reaction in a lot more depth later on. The next type of reaction we have is an elimination reaction, and for this reaction we have um, we have a alkyl halide that has hydrogens next door. Sorry about my phone guys, I, uh, I uh, forgot to turn it off. And so we have a, a strong base that's going to pull off a hydrogen, okay, form a double bond and kick out the leaving group. Okay, when that happens we get what's called an elimination reaction because we're eliminating the hydrogen and the leaving group and we're forming a double bond. Okay, so this reaction is going to form an alkene from our alkyl halide and the other products of this reaction are going to be the base that's now protonated, okay, the conjugate acid of the base plus the halogen or the, the leaving group, it might not be a halogen. Okay, and so I wanted to give you some examples of this before we move on from this section. So for example, we might have, um, let's say we have this thing with a chlorine on it, and then we have um, this uh, would be our um, this would be our nucleophile. So on the left we have an, our, our electrophile, 
This next species is our nucleophile. And what happens here is the nucleophile is going to replace the chlorine there as a leaving group. And we'll look at this mechanism in some later videos. All right, and this is a substitution reaction. But we can also have a similar reaction where we even have the same starting materials. And now our nucleophile is acting as a base. It's going to pull off a hydrogen okay, and kick out this leaving group and form a double bond. So we end up with an alkene and ethanol. Okay, So the difference in these reactions, we get a substitution product on the top and an alkene on the bottom. So we're going to look at both substitution and elimination reactions in this chapter in a lot more depth. So here's an example of this. So notice that even though, it, like the example we just saw, these reactions can actually compete with each other. We may not, we may get a substitution product or we may get an elimination product depending on our reaction conditions or it may just depend on our substrate or our base that we're using. Okay, so here's another example of a competing, of that competing, those competing pathways here where we can have hydroxide acting as a nucleophile and replacing the chlorine giving us a substitution product or we can have hydroxide acting as a base pulling off a hydrogen and giving us an elimination product. So these are competing pathways for this reaction and we're going to go ahead and talk about those in a lot more depth in upcoming videos. This is just an overview of the chapter so if you don't understand all of this at once right now that's okay just let's just you know talk about it as we move along. Alright, so why do these reactions actually happen? It's because the halogen is electron withdrawing and it can draw ele withdraw electron density from the carbon, leaving a partial positive on the carbon and a partial negative on the halogen, making that carbon, the, that's called the alpha carbon because it's the carbon bearing the halogen, making it susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So a nucleophile is negatively charged, it's going to be seeking out something that's positively charged and it will attack that partial positive on the carbon. Halogens are also good leaving groups and so if something is going to undergo a substitution or elimination reaction it has to have a good leaving group and it's a good leaving group because it's stable so we'll again look at that a lot later on. Okay, So here's some examples of some really good leaving groups. Um, the the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base okay, of an acid, and the weaker the conjugate base, the more stable it is, the more stable conjugate bases make the best leaving group, it turns out. So here we have, um, we have this, uh, let's look at some of these. So here just, we just have some of the halo acids, and notice that their conjugate bases are some of the best leaving groups. Okay, and we're going to look at some other leaving groups like the tosylate and water and then we have a list of some bad leaving groups. So we'll look at these in a lot more detail uh, later on and we'll look at even more leaving groups and consider uh, how they, uh, how stable they are and whether they're good leaving groups or not. So we're going to move along in this chapter um, beginning by studying uh, just properties and naming of alkyl halides, and then we'll begin our discussion of substitution reactions. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.